for you long, uh, there is a word from God. And uh, it's coming from 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. All right? So I know you're not going to turn to it. You're just going to look at the screen. Come on, let's speak. Let's keep it all the way real. We're looking at the screen. We're looking at the screen. But if you want to turn to it, that is the address. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. I hope it's coming up in a minute. Okay, there it is. All right. It's, uh, it reads, and so... Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as fleshly, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready. Say you wasn't ready. You were not ready for solid food. Even now, you are not still ready, for you are still fleshly, for as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not fleshly and behaving according to human inclinations. May the Lord bless the God's holy word and may God bless us. Y'all put on, put on your seatbelts today, saints. Y'all already looking like, what is going on? What is this word got to be about? But I believe that God has a word from us from on high, so God bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Saints, Valentine's Day is coming up. It's on Tuesday. Praise the Lord. Ooh, harsh crowd. Not, not feeling Valentine's. Okay, I see. All right, no one's excited about Valentine's. You know, it's just a made-up holiday anyway. No worries. Um, it's, a, it's when we tend to turn our attention towards relationships or lack thereof. Can I get an amen? Maybe that's why I got quiet. Uh, it's always good, though, within our lives to stop and evaluate. Stop and evaluate whether you are growing or maturing in life, especially in your relationships, right? And you got to have some markers in your life. Now, I'm, I'm going to just touch on relationships for a minute because y'all remember when you were, maybe you when you were a teenager and you had crush on people. Um, when, you, when you were attracted to people, a lot of times your attraction or your crush was a little superficial, right? You like people for, for weird reasons, like they're, they're cute, or I like their jacket, or I like their, you know, I just like the way they wear, they tie their shoes. Like it was a, something was a little superficial. Anybody with me when you was younger, you just had crazy reasons for why you like people. That was a little superficial. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, somewhere along the line, as you have, if you've grown, and into your uh, adulthood, I'm hoping that there uh, is a part where we start selecting people in our lives for reasons that carry a little more substance. Can I get an amen? All right, so this might hit a few of y'all, so just look straight. Don't look to the left or to the right. Just keep looking straight and nobody will know that it's you. If you're sitting by someone who you think it relates to, just look straight. Just keep looking at me, all right? Superficial reasons. Hopefully, as we are growing and, and, uh, and evolving as adults, we are um, choosing people because they're good human beings, amen? That they're just good people. That, that, that At least they can clean a little bit, amen? Is that a, just, just clean, just basics, right? I'm not asking for a lot. Can you communicate? Can you just talk about your feelings? You know, more things of more substance, not just, you know, I like your one dimple. Like, that, okay, one of those. So we not we moving from superficial into a more substance, right? You start to have more mature thoughts like, why am I attracted to this person, right? There's why questions. Is this relationship more about them or is it more about me, right? Come on, y'all stay with me. It, it, it just got, come on, keep looking straight ahead. Now, y'all, while we walking through something, now, one of the most hard, the hardest relationship to be in, y'all can tell me, give me an amen if you've been in one of these relationships. The hardest relationship to be in is when a person is arrested in their development and their maturity. In their maturity level. I got an amen. Where their age is not matching their response to adversity. Right? Y'all know, know of people whose ages aren't matching what, how they are responding in life. Um, have you ever seen a grown man or a grown woman throw a temper tantrum? 
Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. There you go. This is just a temper tantrum. Or um, older people doing silent treatment. Let you know, like, all right, all right. I'm, I'm still, y'all with me? Y'all with me? How about we, we, we still hanging up on people? That's what we doing? Is that like what we used to do that in junior high? <laughs> junior was like, yeah, you can get it too. All right, right? Right? We, you know, this is like when we're older but still behaving, it may be in a more immature manner. That's a, that's a hard relationship to be in. Um, but our passage today, look at these little cute ones. In our passage today, Paul was concerned. She's so cute. Look at the shoes. In our passage today, Paul was concerned about this Corinthian church's matriculation into spiritual things, right? He was like, y'all still on milk, and I've been with you for a minute. Y'all still acting like babies. I want to give you more, but y'all can't even handle it. We can't even, you're going to choke. I can't even give you what you really need in this stage of your life because you're not ready, right? This is what Paul, his concern was, and like Paul, this current westernized brand of Christianity has me also concerned. I'm concerned about the state of our arrested spiritual development, especially through this pandemic. Amen? Amen. It's, um, it's always a good, like I said, it's a good practice to mark your growth in various seasons. Y'all remember when y'all was little, did you, the marks as you were getting older, you kept seeing how you're growing. Somewhere along the line, after we've reached our height in puberty, we stop checking on our growth. We stop seeing, where am I? Am I still growing? Am I still, because anything that's not growing is dying. Think about it. Anything that's not growing is dying. So one mark of maturity is to interrogate the why of your faith. The why of your faith. And this is, the, this is the topic of our message today. Maturing your why. Maturing your why. Y'all with me? Y'all going to have to come and put on your seatbelt because we going. I'm going to ask you a real hard question. What is your why for following Jesus? I want you to think about that. Maybe you haven't even decided to follow Jesus yet. Maybe you still like, I'm just checking out, kicking the tires of the church, seeing what this is all about. But what is your why? Why are you here? Why are you tuning in online? Why did you come into this building on a good Sunday morning when you could have been at home in the bed drinking some coffee, right? What is your why? Why? When, when we first decided to do this Jesus thing, it's easy to come into it for superficial reasons. We all got to start somewhere. We're not mad at babies when they learn how to walk and crawl. We, you know, we, we all have, we're all new to something at some point in our life. Amen. So when we first come into faith, sometimes it's for superficial reasons. It's what my family has always done. My family always went to church. Anybody like that? I, we grew up in church. I got to go. I don't feel right if I don't go to church. Anybody like that? All right. Um, church makes me feel good. I just like it. I get the music. I get the tinglys. I get the, I get a word. I just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I just feel better when I come out of church. Anybody ever felt like that? Like, it's just something about church. I just got to go. Um, for some of us, we might need fire insurance. Praise the Lord. Fire insurance. I just need a get out of hell free card. Just in case. I'm going to say this little prayer. I'm good, right? I'm good. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm out. Right? Fire insurance. And some of us are like, I just need Jesus to come through on some stuff that I need. Like, Jesus, I need you. I got a whole list of things that I need from you. And I'm just coming here because I, I'm a need, I just need some stuff. I need you to hand me down some stuff. Has anybody ever been in any of those categories? No shame. We all in this together. I've been of all of them. All of the above. Check them all. Well, like the ba just like babies, this Christian relationship can become all about me. It can all be, you know, you know how babies are. Everything is about them. Feed me, change me, play with me, give me everything I need, give me what I want. Like a baby, Christianity can become all about 
me. The Beyonce spirit takes over us. Me, myself, and I. Jesus, if you just take care of them three things, we'll be fine. So this, um, this Christian relation can become all about me, and it translates, listen to this, into a false notion that following Christ is all about what you can get. Come on, sit in this with me. That following Christ is all about what you can get. It as just like um, a lot of people have taken on the Janet Jackson spirit. What have you done for me lately? Jesus, what are we doing? I asked you for what, what have you, what are you doing for me? Like, what am I getting out of this, right? Or, um, I gave you my timeline, Lord. I said that I wanted to be married at this time. I needed kids at this time. I needed to get into college at this time. What we doing, right? Or um, you didn't give me what I asked for, Jesus, so now I'm done. Anybody know people like that? I came. I tried. I asked for my grandma to be healed. She died, so I'm done. All right, as if God is this cosmic Santa or genie in the sky, and so therefore we have a spiritual tantrum. We give God the silent treatment. God, I'm not fooling with you no more because I did not get what I want just like a baby. This is where God is, God is leading us. I, you know, I brought my own amens in my pocket today. So y'all good. We just go, y'all can sit in it. Just sit in this word because I'm, I'm fine. Y'all just sit in and let, and let it just get in, into your soul. This has led to a generation of Christians who just take and take and take and take and never reciprocate. We become a black hole of Christian living. This is all about me. The gospel is all about me. Jesus got to do something for me. Jesus, touch me, heal me, give me stuff. It's all about me. Dare I say, we have become a gold-digging generation of saints. Now I ain't saying you're a gold digger. But I'm going to leave that right there. A gold digger, the Urban Dictionary says, is a person, a term for a person who engages in a type of transactional relationship for things rather than love. It, it, if it turns into marriage, the marriage is just out of convenience. It's about things, not about love. It's about transaction and convenience. And this concerns me as I look around where we are spiritually, even in our country, in our nation, in our city, even in the city of Berkeley. Now, uh, Jesus, I love the way, I love Jesus, by the way. And I love the way Jesus dealt with things. Jesus, when, when he was in his ministry, he noticed that people started following him. You know, not, not, because they were just genuinely like Jesus. They were like, hey, when we getting some more of that bread, you handing out some more of them fish? I heard that we got free lunch over here. Hey, Jesus, where are you going? Right? Or you got, you got any one of the miracles, Jesus? They would bring their families and loved ones and line up. Somebody was so desperate, they cut a hole in the roof to let their loved one down. Jesus, give me something like the whole crowds, it was paparazzi before it was paparazzi. Jesus had throngs and crowds and multitudes of people following him. And so he started throwing out some heavy statements, y'all. I love this about Jesus. To see if people was really about this life. He started throwing out heavy statements. He wanted to mature them from a give me, give me, give me, give me, give me people to a people of genuine faith and motives. All right, you got it? So I'm gonna throw out, there's a, there's a heavy statement Jesus threw out. I want y'all to check it out. It's Mark 8, 34. Heavy statement. All at the height of his, you know, he wasn't trying to be like getting his influencers and his followers up. He wasn't trying to get people to, to you know, like, I gotta do this for the gram. Like, he was like, okay, I see what we got going on in this crowd. Let me throw out this, let me throw out this, um, 
Let me draw out this scripture, Mark 8, 34. It says, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, <clears throat> whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Mic drop. Love this about Jesus. You can leave this verse up, Mike, for the rest of the time. I want y'all to just look at it and marinate it, get it into your spirit. This verse right here separates the crowd from the disciples, the babies from the mature. Somewhere along the line, we have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray, run amok into thinking that following Christ is all about what you can get. Come on. Y'all with me? I'm getting Okay, okay, okay. We just stay focused. Stay focused. Deeply rooted relationships take work. Anybody who's been in a relationship, raise your hand if you've ever been there, and I'm not even talking about romantic or relationship with any other human being, knows that it takes work. If if you want to go deeper with anybody past a surface level, it takes intentionality. Amen? If you want to just go deeper than, hey, bye, hi, girl, hi, guy, how you doing? When you get into a real relationship with anybody, a coworker, a supervisor, whatever, it takes intentionality. Now, a mature relationship with Jesus is very intentional. This relationship is not centered around me or what I can get. This is the caveat. Listen to me, please, if you don't hear nothing else. The, the gospel, the whole truth of the gospel is not about what I can get, but instead it is about realizing that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Without Jesus, I'm completely lost. Like, I'm desperate for you. Like, I have nothing else to give. I have no other place to go. I have nothing else. Like, well, I desperately need Jesus. And this is the problem in 2023 because everyone is self-sufficient. I don't need anybody. I don't know nobody telling me what to do. Nobody telling me what to say. I'm my own boss. I'm running things. I got things pretty much figured out. Jesus is more like an accessory. Jesus just is something I do on Sundays. You know, I'll check out flip, feel good in my spirit, and then I'm gone. We are separating and developing and maturing from babies into a spiritual mature person who is interrogating our whys as to why we're even doing this. Why are we even doing this, right? So really quick, that passage is still up, and I only have a few more minutes. I'm just going to break down this passage because it's so good. Okay, the first thing is that Jesus called the people to himself. We could have just stopped right there. Because nothing happens unless you hear the call of Jesus. Jesus has to call you unto himself. Jesus is always calling. Jesus is always ringing your number. Jesus is always looking for you. Jesus is always tapping you on your shoulder. He called them to himself. The question is, will you answer? Will you keep running? Will you keep ignoring? Will you keep saying, oh, tomorrow, another day, I'll go another time? right? Jesus is calling you. Second thing, he says, if anyone desires, somebody say desire. Anyone desires to come after me. This is so huge, and it took me out on this part. It says, anyone desire. This is what I feel we are missing, a desire. I love this because a desire means that it is a free will. We are not coerced. We are not forced. We are not pushed. I'm, let me help you out with some people in your life who you, who you want to love God and come to church with you. You can't force them. Parents, you can't force them babies. You can introduce it to them. We can't force them. He says, if anyone desire, do I have anybody in here who desires God? Desire, God, I want you. I want you more than anything. Until we get to that level, like, God, not that Jesus is an option, but God, I want you. Like, literally you, more than anything else in my life. Jesus says, if anyone desires to what? Come after me. 
not just desire to come to church, desire to do the things, desire to look cute. No, to really come after you like, God, I'm pursuing you. I am seeking you. I need you more than life itself. That's a whole nother level of maturity. That's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level. All right, y'all with me? The next thing, deny himself. Deny himself. That means I am giving up all rights. And this is where we lose most of the crowd. This is where we lose people who are like, well, I wasn't doing all that. I was just, just coming to church. Deny yourself. I am giving up my rights, my opinions, ooh, my suggestions. I'm going to deny myself. And this is why fasting was so important for us, because it trains your soul to deny things. <laughs> when it's out, yo, you can't always have that piece of chocolate cake. Deny yourself. You can't always call that person on all hours of the night. Deny yourself. Do I have a crowd that's alive? That's what I told you. I got it. I got my own. Here it goes. Right here. My amen. The last thing. Take up your cross. Think about this. This is the statement that Jesus made for everybody who want to follow me. I said, I got you. You want to follow me? Y'all here for the fish and stuff? All right. Let me throw this out. You got to take up your cross. The cross was the most brutal form of execution uh, for the Roman, that the Romans invented. It was the most shameful and horrible way to die. The image of uh, the image is that this already condemned person is carrying a beam of their cross to the site of the execution. Jesus, this is your marketing plan? Jesus, this is how you're recruiting people into, the, into your crew? You're like, uh, anybody, y'all want to roll with me? All right, bet. Die. Matter of fact, not, not just die, pick up your cross and follow me. Where are we going? I don't know. We just come with me. Laying down your life, not a murder. This is the difference, that you're laying, I'm choosing to lay my life down. That's the difference. Jesus laid his da life down voluntarily, and he's asking us to do the same, to commit our lives wholeheartedly to him, accepting any hardships this choice may bring. Woo! We can't hardly take no hardships. Any little thing happen, be like, oh, my gosh, see, this is what I mean. Every time I try to go to church, something always happens. I don't know. I just can't do this, right? Any hardships that might come. I'm going to leave you with this verse. Galatians 2.20 is one of my favorites. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Salvation comes by dying to the old life and raising again to a new life in Christ. Take up your cross. Last thing he said was, follow me. Follow me. I love this. Follow me. Follow me. Y'all remember back in kindergarten, you used to play Simon Says? Yeah, y'all used to get out because you didn't know how to follow. Mother, may I? You got to learn how to follow folk, right? To follow means that one must die to one's social, one's own social, political, or spiritual agendas. Telling somebody what to do is not following. Always making suggestions is not following. Always, you know, you know that person who rides with you in the car in the side passenger seat while you're driving and want to tell you everything what to do? That's not following. You ever get in the car and you're in the carpool and the person who's supposed to be following you go in front of you and like, what are we doing? That's not following. Following Jesus. Following Jesus. Every move he makes, we're following. Where are we going? I don't know. I'm just going to follow. This is what separates the true gospel from just a, a culture of going to church. At some point, I'm going to close with this because I don't know where this landing in your hearts. At some point, our relationship with Jesus can't all be about taking, 
there must be some give and take. Somebody say give and take. In his words, his words call us to live lives of self-denial, surrender, get this suffering and sacrifice. Now that, that ain't on a big ticket when we be like, give your life to Jesus. Do you understand what those words mean? Give your life. We say it so casually, like, I'm not going to give my life to Jesus. You're giving your life is a big decision. That's why I don't want to rush people to come on. They're, come on down to Al because it feels good and the music is going. No, 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 no. You really need to think about what you're doing. What, we, what, what decision are we making right here? I love, what I, what I love about Jesus, I already told you I love him. But what I love about him is that you can never accuse Jesus of false advertising. He told you from jump what you're signing up for. Do you ever see him in them army commercials? That'd be like, join the army. And then the whole army is like them in battle and training and running and jumping over stuff. And I'd be like, you can't go to the army and be like, oh, so where are we going? To the beach? Like, we clearly told you in the commercial all the stuff you about to be doing. Crawling on the ground and gun. Oh, like, it was a lot. I feel like Jesus is doing the same. Hey, this is what it is. You want to follow me? Come, come through. But let me tell you what it's going to be. So you might be asking, then why? Why would I even do this? Some of y'all are like, I was going to give my life to Christ, but now I'm good because this feels like a lot. Right? I think we need to have more of these honest conversations and not just give your life to Jesus and everything's going to be amazing. And then when everything's not amazing, you're like, man, forget this. Right? Why follow Jesus then? If it's this hard, if we got to deny ourselves, none of that sounds fun. Dying does not sound fun. Denying myself, following folk, I can't do my own thing. Can't, what doesn't sound fun at all? Doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't feel convenient. Jesus, why? I'm going to give you why. This is the last closing verse. Huh? John. John 6. Woo, y'all got to read John 6 one, time, one, one day. It's a long chapter. But... Um, it was right when Jesus started talking crazy. He was talking about, like, uh, communion and stuff. And he was talking about, not communion, he was talking about, hey, you got to drink my blood and, and eat my body. And, and, you know, that's how you go if you want to roll with me. And people were like, what the heck is he, what is this do? And so verse 60, he said, on hearing it, <laughs> many of his disciples said, hey, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept this? What is he talking about? Drinking blood and eating blood. What, what in the world? And then from verse 66, it says, From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. They was like, hey, this is, this is a little too much. You didn't sign up for all this. Thank you, Jesus. It's been real. Verse 67, look at Jesus. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12, like, what? Where y'all, y'all want to go? Y'all can roll too. It ain't no thing. I'm here to save the world. Y'all want to cut? Or... I love my the ghetto verse. That was, that was not in the Bible. I just got to throw in the ghetto translation. Okay, verse uh, 67. Peter, Simon Peter answered him, and this is our why. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Ooh, Peter finally did something good in that moment. He said, God, he's like, you want to leave too? Because I know this is hard. He's like, God, where am I going to go? You're the only one that has the, the, the words of life. You're, I have come to what? Know and believe. There's nothing you can do to that. I know that you are the Holy One of God. I know that you are, and this is our why of following Jesus. You're the only one, God. You're the only one that has the words of eternal life. You're the only one who gives me life, who gives me peace, that gives me joy unspeakable, peace beyond measure. You're the only one who can do that. This is the thing our ancestors knew. You can say what you want about the, the false narrative that was given to us in the form of Christianity, but they found in the midst of all that foolishness a real savior. Our ancestors found something to be true no matter what that white master was saying. 
They found a Jesus that they knew, that they know, that they knew, that they knew was real, that was keeping them, that was helping them, that was strengthening them. In the midst of every horror of slavery, they found a God who they knew and they believed was the Holy One of God. Where else am I going to go, Jesus? Where else am I going to go? I believe that God wants us to mature to the point where we can say, I have encountered God in such a way that I have a nevertheless in my spirit. It doesn't matter. Come what may. You can't can't make me doubt him. There is nothing that because I've come to know him for myself. You can't take that from me. I don't care. I don't if whatever comes, whatever goes, I have found the Messiah. The old folks used to say the road is rough and the going is tough. Ah, and the hills are hard to climb. Y'all know this song? I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind I've decided to make Jesus my joy. See, y'all don't know about that. That's what our ancestors said. I don't care what comes, what goes. I have made this decision that I will take up my cross, I will deny myself, I will follow Jesus, come what may. So in the times that we are living in, saints, we got to raise up people who have a little spiritual grit. We got to raise up people who are rooted, not shallow or easily moved. We got to raise up people who will be like, I don't care what the circumstance look like. You can't make me doubt God. I know it looks crazy. I know the timeline I gave God has been busted. I know the things I might have prayed for did not come the way I thought they should. But there is a God for whom I have believed these are the people we got to, as we are moving into, we don't know, our t- these times are uncertain. The pandemic showed us that people, we are easily moved and easily swayed. But let's get rooted. Let's, uh, let's interrogate our why. Let's be like that tree that's planted by rivers of water that won't be moved with every storm and every wind. Here's my reflection questions. I only got two interrogate your why for following Jesus. I want you just to think on that. We're, we're on meditation this week. Just think about your why. Why am I doing this? Why am I following Jesus? Why? And then secondly, where is God trying to mature you spiritually? Where is God trying to Come on, let's stand. We could just go ahead and go back with that verse, with that song again. I felt that in my spirit. My God. Go ahead and stand. Go ahead and stand. Yes. I started out. I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt. There is no doubt. In my mind, I decided to make Jesus my joy. One more time, the road, the road is rough, and the going gets tough, and the going gets tough, and the hills, and the hills are. time ago a long time ago there is no doubt in my mind I decided to make Jesus my joy so God we just come
come before you, God. We thank you for your word on today. I know it might have been a tough or a heavy word, but I'm praying that it will sit and resonate in the heart of your people. God, even those who are watching online, as our eyes are closed, if you heard this word and you were like, God, I want to reinterrogate my why, I am here and I have never given my life to you in this way completely. God, this is the day that I want to make my choice. I have read the fine print. I have seen what it takes to be a follower of you. I have outweighed my choices, and I have decided that it is better in the kingdom of God. It is better to follow you. It is better to go through the things that I'm going through in life as long as I have you. As long as I have you, God, I am okay. So if that's you... I want you to go ahead and just raise your hand, just wave it in the air, just where everybody is, is has their eyes closed. If that tune's like, God, I am, I'm irritated. I'm, I'm making a decision today. If that's you, would you just repeat after me and just say, oh God, I need you. I am so sorry for all the things that I've done in my life that was not pleasing to you. I repent. God, I'm saying today, I want to make you my choice. God, come into my life. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. I want you to mark down this day. I want you to say this is the day that I made a mature choice. I didn't just do it because my grandma took me to church. I made a mature choice to follow Jesus. There is no doubt.